So, Ben, yeah, thank you for joining us today. It's very kind of you to, to take part in these conversations. Yes, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to speak. Uh, just at the front, I should say, these are all personal views. There is no organizational endorsement, no recommendations or anything about that. We're just going to talk about a little uh, themes about what's happening, but with no organizational endorsement. How do you think analysts and investment professionals uh, are reacting to this event and how should we react? So without sounding trite, obviously unprecedented for a lot of uh, the effects that we're seeing. I think people sort of bucket it in two or three ways. So one is looking after client money. So most of us are looking after client money. So we're very careful to make sure that uh, secure uh, client expectations are still being met, obviously, in unprecedented times. And I think the best of us are, are making sure that our communication uh, is really up so that we're really communicating what people should expect. I think the second element is around our own organizational uh, resilience and strength. So we're making sure our teammates, our colleagues, and, and everything uh, is good and around that. And then the third element is obviously what is this mean for markets, both systemically for companies, it's both bond markets, equity markets, a lot of uh, assets there, what it might mean for policy and governments and companies. And obviously a lot of that is still, uh, is still working through. Uh, but I think you know, we're a service industry, our clients always come first and we're dealing with obviously a lot of people's pension money and we want to make sure that's as safe and look after and secure uh, as can be possible in these very challenging times. Your specialisms are around healthcare and also ESG and slash sustainability. Um, obviously, healthcare is going to be very much central. What are the questions that clients are coming to you uh, with at the moment? So there are a lot of questions around healthcare and resiliencies of portfolios. Uh, people want to know, are we stress testing our scenarios in terms of scenario analysis about what the puts and takes are? There's a lot of talk about, we dub them the letters. Is there a U-shape, V-shape, L-shape, W-shape sort of recovery on that? So we're running a lot of scenarios and uh, clients want to know how are we resilient to that. There are a lot of questions about uh, organizational resilience. So are you being able to work from home remotely? Um, you know, are our... Uh, are things like that secure? A lot of the questions around ESG are very interesting because there's lots of puts and takes uh, here. So one is there's in the short term, well, we've seen that some interesting short term aspects for things like pollution. So air pollution, people have noticed the quality of, of air has gone up in a lot of places. And there's some talk as well, can we make that continue? Uh, the second element is, well, what happens in the medium to long term? If we have a big resurgence in activity, will we cut corners in some other ways, which actually will be damaging for the long term, even though in the kind of shortish term, say, six to 12 months, you might want that kick started. The other element is on global coordination. So a lot of these, what you know, financial people call ex externalities, how do we price pollution? How do we price carbon? How do we price pollution? there's a lot of puts and takes about this. Obviously, the big climate conference COP has also been delayed now into 2021. So is this a moment that we can gather together and get global coordination on some of these aspects? Or if not global coordination now, at least uh, a, a sense of more coordination in general? Or is this meant we're going to splinter and it's going to be more problematic in the medium term in getting coordination on some of these long-term climate-related issues. And that's very much up for grabs. And I think it will be uh, those investors who are very interested and the stakeholders who want this will need to continue to make the case that actually this is the moment to seize these opportunities, to show that we weren't pre prepared in many aspects for uh, the pandemic, mm -hmm. and actually investment for the long-term healthcare infrastructure, climate resilience, all of these matters should be a moment that we can come together and make that last. Uh, and that will be really interesting to see how that goes. There is some evidence that companies who have been more resilient on this, so have had stronger human capital, have had these kind of elements to their business model, they seem to have come out of this so far, perhaps in a little bit of a stronger position. So that might argue for an integrated ESG or more positive uh, kind of environmental, human, and social uh, capitals going forward. Uh, so we'll see that. 
On the flip side, uh, not to talk belabor the point too much, uh, the other thing which is going on, which is uh, in parallel to this, is actually the oil shock. So it's, that's not really directly COVID related. And that has a lot of interesting puts and takes as well. So what happens to the US fracking industry? What actually happens to renewables at this price? What are we doing about subsidies for new renewables and, and fossil fuels? And that interplay, because actually a higher price in some ways is better incentives for renewables, all else being equal. But we know that's not. There's carbon pricing, there's subsidies and things like that. So at least in the ESG debate, actually the oil shock in tandem with what's happening with COVID is a, is a very interesting debate that a lot of investors are having.